Hi friends, it's Kristen. For this month's craft, we're going to be making origami folding toys. This kit will contain everything you need to make two folding toys. All you'll need are glue and a utensil. Uh, make sure to register online for your copy of the craft kit and keep watching to learn how to make one of these. So when you're ready to start folding, you are going to get your paper together. You're going to want to have some glue handy. I'm using a glue stick, but you can use white glue just as easily. And you're also going to want a utensil. Doesn't matter what, can be a spoon, can be a fork, can be a butter knife. You just want something with a nice flat end on it to have handy. So what you're going to do to start is you're just going to pick your first piece of paper. You are going to fold it in half like a book. And you're just going to pinch the ends so you get a nice tight fold. You're going to open that up, turn it, and then fold it again, just like a book. And then pinch that off. You want to get this as lined up as you can. So if it's not even, you can just refold it and pinch it back. The nice thing about this is all the folds are going to be inside of the finished product. So nobody's going to know that you had to unfold and refold this. It's not a big deal. So for next step, we're going to turn it on its point like that so it looks like a kite. And we're going to fold each corner in to touch the middle crease. So basically we're folding these squares into triangles. And you want these to line up side by side. So the end here has a nice point. Now mine doesn't. So I'm just going to unfold it and kind of squish it in closer do that so I do have a point. And you're just going to keep turning and folding. Eventually you'll have an envelope and then you're going to turn the envelope flap in like that. Same deal. Bend that short. And here's where your spoon comes in handy. If you want a nice tight crease, you take the end of the spoon or other utensil and you just rub it. Punch it like that on all your creases and all your folds. And that gives it a nice tight finished fold on you without having to hurt your hands. So now that we have that, we're going to open up all four of those flaps again. And then we're just going to fold each of these points in to touch the square line here. So just halfway, so just like that, touches. You know, origami looks complicated, and it can be, but this one I chose because every fold you make on it is only folding something in half. So you're just folding each of these triangles in half, just like that, to touch those lines. Oop, come on, buddy. He doesn't want to cooperate, so he gets the spoon. It's all folded in like this. You're just going to take each one of those flaps you just made, Fold those back in. So you're back to having that triangle just with all these little flaps. I'm going to take the spoon on each of those two. So now I'm going to flip that completely upside down. So now you've got a nice flat end. Again, looks like a kite. And you're going to take one of those points and just fold it towards the middle again. Now it's going to get a little harder to fold here because you folded a bunch of times already. I guess just take your time, use your spoon. If you got to go back and fix it, go back and fix it. It's not a big deal. The nice thing about this is once you learn how to do it, you can do it with any kind of stiff paper you want. So this is just colored printer paper. You can use construction paper if you want. You can use cardstock, you can use origami paper. I've used candy wrappers in the past from like those Hershey's miniatures. This guy does not want to go. There we go. I went too far on this one, so I'm gonna come back. Same deal, you want nice points in the corners. So. So now when you turn it back upside down, you're going to get something like this. It's a square with little flaps and a diamond shape in the middle. And we're just going to open up those flaps a little bit with a finger. Don't have to open them all the way, just make them a little loose. 
so that they pop up just a little bit and you can see inside. Now, this looks tricky, but again, I promised you, I, this one you're only folding everything in half. So you're just gonna take those two points and fold this whole thing in half so those two tips touch. And you see when you do that, because you've popped the corners, they're sticking out a little bit and you're just gonna put your finger on either side of that corner and just squish it. So when it folds, it looks like that. And then you're gonna do the other thing with this side. This one didn't pop as well, but you can still grab the two corners. Pinch it shut, and now, you see it looks like a paper hat. And then you're gonna open that up. Now it looks like a little mouth. Turn it sideways, and you're gonna do the same thing with this side. Open these flaps a little bit, and fold these two back in to make the hat. And then when these pop out, do the same thing. Just pinch those two corners. So they touch and you get a paper hat. And then open that again. So, now when you fold each of these, they're gonna pinch like a, oops, hey buddy, like a mouth. All right, so you go back to whichever hat you side you want. And now you're gonna open these up when you're pinching it. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold these in to touch. There's a couple different ways to do it. Sometimes you can just squish. Sometimes you can go sideways. It's whatever you feel comfortable with. I like to kind of squish like that. So you take the two sides of the hat, push them in towards each other, and you see these guys pop out. Pinch that again, and you're gonna fold that flat against this guy. You see it looks like a heart on this side. You're gonna turn it. Same with this guy, pinch him again and fold him flat to meet that side. Your finished product looks like a heart, just a little bouncy. And you are gonna do that eight times until you have a whole pile of hearts. And when you're credited with your hearts, you get your eight. I've given you enough to make multiple so you can use any color combination you want. I happen to have two reds, so I'm just gonna put two colors between each red, three colors between each red, because when these are all glued together, they're gonna touch, so I didn't want the two reds to touch. And you're gonna take your glue, be on with you. Take two of your hearts, take your glue. I'm using a glue stick, so I'm just gonna rub. You wanna make sure on each side of the flat, you want it to get it everywhere. Because you want this to stick on every point so it holds when you start using it as a fidget toy. And you can actually glue both sides if you want, if you're using glue stick. If you're using white glue, you only have to glue one side. Just do the same thing. Use a popsicle stick or you can use the back side. Ooh, everything's sticking. You can use the back side of your spoon to just spread the glue and make sure it touches everything. Don't use a lot of white glue when you're using it because that just makes everything slippery and then you've got to wait a long time for it to dry. So when you've got glue on both sides, you're gonna to touch the two faces of the heart together and just make sure they line up and give it a good squish and just hold it in place and put it aside for a little while to dry. And I've got one already to show you. And these are already dry, so you get a nice accordion bounce to them and you are just gonna keep gluing and sticking all these guys until you're gonna get a nice big stack. And I'll be right back with my stack and I'll show you how to do the last step. So we're back. I have glued eight hearts together. And if you get a nice accordion stretch like this, it means everything is dry enough for you to do the last step. If some of them start coming apart, just put some more glue on them, put it aside, let it dry. Patience is important with this. So, you are just gonna put glue on the last heart in the line. Same with the others, you make it nice and spread in all the corners. And now you are gonna gently bend this into a circle. So the last heart on this side touches this heart. And glue them just like you do with the other ones. It's a little trickier because now you can't get your whole hand in there to get it flat, but you kind of pinch the top 
of each one here and then the outside like that. Usually that's good enough. If you can get your hand in there to pinch that, that's great too. So that is what your finished one is going to look like once it's all glued together. Now you're going to want to let this dry for about an hour if you're using glue stick and probably at least two hours if you're using white glue before you start folding this. Otherwise everything's going to come apart and you're just going to get frustrated. So I'm going to put this one aside and let it dry. Luckily I have another one already done so I can show you how to play with it. So let's reset this guy because I was playing with it earlier. So we're going to start with the flat side as opposed to this bumpy side here. And it's going to be a little stiff the first few times you want to flip it. So you want to take it a little slow. If the glue comes apart, just add a little bit more glue. Think of this as like, you wouldn't go out on a run without stretching. So you want to get this guy loosened up before you start making it to gymnastics. So the easiest way to do it is just pinch two opposite sides. I only have red on either side, so it's easy for me to know which one. And you're just going to gently start pulling it this way. Now, You'll see some of these are going to pop out a little bit the first few times you do it. That's fine. Just squish them back into place and just sort of gently start bending it backwards. You see this yellow one is flipping out again too, and that's fine. Poke that back into place. Like I said, it's the first few times you've bent it, so the creases aren't as tight as they will be once you've played with this five or ten times. So now once you've flipped it a little bit there, Get that in the inside, you'll see a little bit of a star in the middle. And your same thing, grab two opposite sides and just sort of push back like that. And it's gonna open like that. And just keep doing the same thing. Always have opposite sides. It's gonna open like that. Open like that. And this is where it always pops for me. And I think this blue one is giving me a hard time because. I got a little impatient with this blue and didn't fold it as tight as I should. But just do a little bit more squishing. Just keep pushing. And you'll see that now it's going a lot easier. So now I can flip pretty quickly. This is still a little slow. This is always the tricky part because this is where the most of the folds are on the inside. This blue guy is really really stubborn. But the others are holding pretty good. Now that I've said that, it's not going to go. But <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we go. So yeah, you just keep folding that. I find this kind of calming. It's good to do at a desk when you're a little stressed out taking breaks from homework. Or maybe you get a break from your latest Zoom lesson if you're doing Zoom classes still or doing Zoom meetings. I still do Zoom meetings and I get just as bored or antsy as anyone does on those sometimes. So just kind of taking a little break. Doing what this is calming and it's not noisy. So if you forget to mute yourself, no one's going to know that you're fidgeting just under the camera. So that's it. If you would like a kit, don't forget to register on our website. And if you don't get a kit, it's pretty easy to make on your own. Like I said, you just need glue, a utensil, and a bunch of colored papers that are all the same square size. Now post-its work great if you've already got a stack of post-its at home, or you can just cut a sheet of notebook paper up into these sizes. And instead of having it colored, just make a lot of funky patterns on it. So when you bone, bend it, and get spots, stripes, or whatever. But that's all you got. Have a great day.